Righto, ladies and gents, as sexy as that promo stuff is, we need to get this going because the match has actually started. Where the hell's the warm-up screen? Let's get across to that and have a quick look. Good afternoon to you all. I'm your host, Noppers. We're fighting on Remigan, Remigan no, uh, day, not night. Um, so I'm going to get this over to the live screen. I've just had some mucking around here that I had to do, but uh, we're going to crack on, folks, because the match is underway. And it is not a N uh, NS match. Although uh, you would have just seen the promo for that, of course. Uh, this is a friendly based on that competition, which is uh, starting very shortly. Um, so, uh, oh, geez, I better check those sides. Yes, I got the sides right. So what, what this is, is, uh, well, hello, welcome, by the way. Good afternoon to you. I'm your host, Noppers. I'm not dressed up in my suit today. It's just the uh, the casual T-shirt. Uh, casual T-shirt Saturday, that's what I'll call it. Why not? And I'm, uh, I've been asked to uh, cast this match this afternoon, which is a friendly match between uh, the Three Para Foy Boy Blend and the ICF team. And now the Three Para guys and the Foy Boy guys are, and girls are, um, are well known to me, of course, and uh, I've played games with them and held it loose and streamed stuff for them or watched them play before. ICF's a brand new clan to me, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about them shortly. But, uh, ladies and gents, the map and the match is underway. And you can see I've got the two points of view there, and that gives us this option here, which is the... Uh, well, when the little thing goes down, there we go. For the two maps. And so I'm going to be on the blue four on the main screen there, on the left-hand screen, which is the OC... Uh, sorry, not the OC, the Foy Boy and Three Para team. Uh, and on the right-hand screen there, you can see that's the ICF team. And we've just got started this. And they, they have a random map roll. Uh, and they roll Remigan Day. <laughs> Just giant fucking lol, honestly. Now, clearly we can see a whole truckload of trouble coming in there, and we can see the same sort of stuff in the other. I'm going to piss these maps off. We want to watch the live. We want to watch the live action here, folks, as we get to the bridge. So I'm just going to get on the match screen. So as I said, I've got, I run two accounts for solo streaming. Thank you to uh, Soupsy2. Oh, there's a fucking truck rolling down the hill already. That one will come up in the truck. <laughs> what the hell happened, boys? Get out, get out. All right. Uh, <laughs> Good to see straight up comedic uh, challenges of coming down the hills at Remigan. What a map to roll first off. But this is the first play now, of course, from the uh, three para foy boy team. What do we call them? The, um, the Oceanic team. That'll do. And uh, ICF, of course, being a Chinese team. And, and as I said, we'll uh, take a look at those later. But, uh, well, so Machine Gun has already set off and uh, up and running. Virus there, uh, spreading himself around with the love on the other team. Now... This is such a tough map to play. Well, let me just get that other camera in closer and see what we can see. Ugh. Sorry about that. I'm just... It is a bit funky. It's on the laptop and, um, and it's off to my left. So I tend to look away from the screen when I'm... Uh, oh, sorry, the microphone when I'm... Uh, uh, when I'm moving it. So uh, in this case, I will... Uh, just try and leave it on the bridge like that and just we can see that nice look down view from one end and then the other nobody's really made any ground just yet now what do we know about this while they're just working their way under the bridge of course um these guys up here uh on that right hand side there will be capping bernhoff and rhein because uh it's a four it's the two rows of course of this these four grid squares so they're actually capping in that zone so that'll just wake up ICF quickly to get some troops over there. And you can see there's some sort of explosion going on over there already. Uh, the Oceanic team is pushing onto the bridge quite nicely. Let's get down and have a look at what this truck's actually doing as it goes through. Endeavour's got somebody with him. Some brave soul sitting in the back of that truck. Uh, good, good luck with that. We'll get out and have a look from the side. He's actually made it halfway across the bridge. I find that quite surprising, to be honest. I really do, because usually this bridge is just getting hammered to the shithouse. But... So this is based on the format of the NRNS competition, which is coming up. Oh, here we go. Destructors made at 10 paces and got shot by uh, old mate there coming across the bridge, the recon leader. So now ICF are just starting to push some troops on across. And there's heaps for me to tell you about these two teams today, but I don't want to get into that just yet. I just want to kind of watch the first play and talk about what's going on. We'll come back and actually have a bit of a chat about the teams later and you know why they're blended and how they're blended, who the players are. And oh, mate's just dropped all the way down into the water. He's going to be a little sad about that. He's just gone the full uh, escape redeploy there. He's fallen through the bridge. I've done that before, mate. I feel your pain. Uh, big fire coming over here from the ICF guys. There'll be some pre-positioned tank stuff, I would guess. Let's see if we can look and see this. They're definitely going, yeah, look at that. The uh, Oceanic team shots coming in there. 
towards wherever the tank was. So that was a 75. I'm guessing that actually was a 75, or is that just a wreck on the map? I can never remember with this one. Most people don't have this in their rotation because it's such a hard map to play. So we've got a bit of a setup. There's the commander of the ICF team. There's a rocket going in from old oh, mate. Geez, he's optimistic. I he's hit the water. But uh, the commander there, I'll just check his name for you. Let's find him. Here he is. Why Why do not Bakio? That'll do. That's what I'm going with. So Bakey there is the commander of the uh, the ICF team. And, of course, you can see down the bottom left-hand corner there, Airboard Kiwi is the commander of the uh, Oceanic team. Everyone just seems to be camping a bit here. That's a very campy game. Put them into Tarkov players at the moment. But... The Oceanic team have got to try and get across this bridge somehow. They've made it three quarters of the way across. So it's fairly impressive. Um, I don't understand why their names are not coming up. Well, let me just check that. What have I done here? Wrong thing. Oh, I go to the auto ta audio tab um, uh, by default. What have I freaking screwed up here? What, I turned something off for doing some filming before. Uh, is that it? Not the one. There it is. Uh, there we go. All right. Uh, I was doing some filming earlier today, uh, and I turned off names and stuff. All right, so what can I tell you about this bridge and this map? Well, this is a bastard of a bridge, uh, and it probably was in World War II as well. You can see there a machine gun is set up in the top. We've got the uh, cap has just occurred there for von Bahnhof and Rhein, of course, for the ICF team because it's on their side. So they've got the significant advantage right now that they've just capped that area. Well done to the Oceanic team, though, for putting so much pressure onto that point so early that it took so long for ICF to capture it, but they've got it now, and they're going to now be able to, at leisure, try and push at this bridge, and uh, just keep the Oceanic team from pushing across. And there's only going to be two ways that the Oceanic guys are going to be able to get across to cap, take our bone off and rain. One is, of course, across the bridge you can see in front of us, and the other one is by airhead. And airheads are about every eight or ten minutes or something from memory, so that's, that's you know, fairly limiting for them. I guess on the flip side, though, there's no chance in hell you're going to see ICF cross across the other side without uh, the same two things, either pushing the bridge or actually uh, dropping an airhead in. So the um, the the uh, the Oceanic team need to be careful of that. All the pressure's on them to try and cap out uh, across the bridge here. But, um, you know, you, you just don't know how this will play out. Let's just move this other camera forward a bit here and get right up into that action there as we go. As I said, it's a little bit funky here trying to do two computers at once, but fuck it, it's worth it, isn't it? We get to see what's actually going on and all the death and dismemberment that's occurring. Probably get this one around, around underneath and see that underneath side, eh? Look at this, look at this uh, fight that's going on here, though. It's a pretty good one. Uh, let's go back down this way, I guess. Where are we? Yeah, in the middle is, in the middle is where you want to be, isn't it? Middle of the bridge? Anyway, that'll do us for now. We'll just keep an eye on that. The main screen's where we want to be at. Um, so, we know that both teams have either got to pop an airhead or actually wipe out the bridge. We can see that everybody's going to be setting up their staging points and their air uh, garrisons and everything like that. So lots of supplies dropping in different spots. Um, one big advantage that the other force there, the blue force there has, and you can see in the top corner, top of the map rather, sorry, top of the screen, I've got the three power Foy boys logo there with the Axis logo on the blue side. That reminds you who's on what side at any time. And then the top right, ICF with the allies there, the red slash orange team throughout this. Now, the allied, uh, see the Axis team, the Oceanic team, have got this giant hill, of course, the Overlook, you can see Funty up the top there. He'd be he'd be putting in some sniper fire, I reckon. Maybe even sending up an anti-tank gun. Definitely got one down here from Strike Back. So he's looking overwatch down onto, yeah, that bridge area. Just trying to hit the bridge entry area there uh, and pick up the ICF team as they come on. Let's go and have a look to see what Funty's actually doing up here. Yeah, he's asking for some subs. He wants to set up this anti-tank gun up here. Of course, the angle that he can get it on, if he's careful enough, I think he's gone a bit too far forward, but if he's careful enough, he should be able to get it on a good enough angle that he's, he's harder to hit. Uh, what we're seeing down here from the Oceanic team is some Belgian gates looking to be placed, uh, and they are getting pushed off the bridge, ladies and gentlemen. ICF are doing a very, very good job of pushing him back. And look at the consolidation over here from them. They've got a giant defensive force here. They do not want any airheads popping in here, so they've got quite a few players there. And, and you can hold... 
the the bridge quite convincingly with even half your force and the other half can be doing all the naughty things to stop anyone else from coming in i can hear a tank somewhere below us there we are that's a steward yeah he's lurking down in the bushes quite nicely and popping shots up onto the top of the hill there uh and i think he just hit his man nice shot that's a gorgeous shot from that steward gosh that's going to be 500 600 meter shot there picking up someone on the top of the hill or picking up something on the top of the hill Probably the anti tank gun actually, just after it was built, he's managed to pick it up. So a bit too exposed up on the top of the hill there, as I was sort of thinking it was going to be. Uh, ICF have beautifully pushed through on the bridge here, they're actually around the back of the mode. Uh, three para OC, uh, Foy Boys, I'm going to see, keep saying OC and Foy Boys by the way, because OC and Foy Boys are actually combined for this competition. Um, three para and Foy Boys here are in a little bit of trouble. If I was telling you the truth, that is what's actually happening here. They are in a fair bit of trouble. Nice big explosions on the bridge there. That's truck just going down. Going to have to get ourselves down to that part of the bridge. We'll just keep a close eye on that. There's some sort of airdrop coming in now. Let's check what that is. Looks like just a supply drop from somebody. Uh, airhead going in on the other side of the creek. Uh, let's see if this airhead's going to work. I don't think it is. You can see now it's been blown up already. Half of ICF F have turned up to take out the airhead. The airhead's already gone. Now that's that's just uh, unfortunate, of course. ICF absolutely waiting for that. Kiwi tried his best there to throw everything at it, have any tank fire and stuff like that. But I'm going to say it right now. You're going to need two or three tanks on Overwatch. Uh, of your airhead drop point and that needs to be a massive coordination thing the alternative is of course you let ICF actually come up into this territory here and let them start to try and cap the overlook and then you flank them and pop across the bridge just sneak across there um, so there's there's a little bit of faint play that needs to be done on this map uh, or, or also as I said before you need multiple overwatch folks actually in looking at um, uh, looking at the uh, area you're going to drop your airhead so first go there was no good from the uh the oceanic team and they're going to keep trying they're going to have to keep working at this it's going to be tough for them but we'll see how we go stream's just gone live so as i said before and it says in the header it's a 15 minute delay on the stream so uh that's just for the comp reasons it's either 15 or 30 and we're used to that if you watch my stream so welcome welcome to all our chinese viewers of course as well who may not have ever seen me stream before hopefully you can understand what the hell i'm talking about um because my English is uh, very Australian, as you probably can tell. Now, let's take a bit of a look here and actually do the two map thing, I think. And we'll just do a bit of a consolidation of what's going on and who's got what where. So if we take a look at that left-hand map, first of all, you can see that the Oceanic team have got all their garries set up. So they've got a very deep defensive line. Uh, interesting there, there's some in infantry marks over to the left-hand side and a garrison mark as well. Uh, where the hell's that? They must be there popping in air, I don't know. So we just blew up in the brick, by the way. Hopefully you... I uh, know oh we didn't see that in the in the corner. Um, so yeah, that's that's a you know, good offensive. All the uh, all the uh, engineering stuff sitting up there in the artillery side. And of course, they'd have plenty of people on artillery. There's at least two guns running, you can see there. Safer King is running one, and somebody else. Let's check. Uh, Doug, Doug and Safer are running artillery. So you want that on this map, uh, that's for sure. That's a great spot to be dropping it as well. We take a look now at the other side, the ICF side. You can see they've got the same sort of garrison set up, haven't they? Look where their supplies are going up the top left there. Just at the back corner of that, they're, they're going to be pushing hard to try and get across here and, and take out the Oceanic teams. Uh, and they have got the advantage on this map with uh, with Bernhoff on the Rhine being the checkpoint, and we know that. But we also saw in the match I cast a while back that Chimera played, I think it was against the line, I'm not sure, that uh, the same layout was there, and the line almost popped an airhead. It was a, it was a great save from a, a person with a grenade to take out the airhead. Otherwise, they would have got through. It was just just amazingly close. Um, so you can see with the ICF team, because they've got the same sort of defense, and they're just pushing across the bridge quite nicely, but it's very much a stalemate at the moment. Uh, no question there, absolute stalemate. Let's go back to the live stream. And... It, it'll trade backwards and forwards as we go. So we'll see that uh, uh, the Oceanic team will start to make ground across the bridge. They'll get to a certain point, sort of somewhere around here usually, and, and these guys get enough people in range to shoot at them, and then they'll get pushed back and they'll go back over here, and then the uh, ICF guys will get stalled sort of about here. That's just the way it works, and part of that is about what's underneath the bridge, of course. So for those that don't know the map really well, and I didn't get time to actually run uh, any any of the um, 
uh, pre pre video stuff and, and that sort of stuff. This is what you're dealing with underneath. So, you know, it is not a new new map. It's been around a while, but a lot of people don't play this one. So straight up, you can see here, this is exactly what it's like. Artillery smashing the top, lots of smoke underneath, shots fired from the right, shots fired from the rest, left, usually anti-tank guns shooting at you as well. People on their guts that you have to try and get past. Um, just brutal here. <laughs> and this is, thank you demo, all the dead bodies there. And here, on the other side of that, the exact same thing down the other direction. Bullets everywhere, bodies everywhere, folks camping, smoke, all sorts of shit. Gotta love it though, don't you? It is just really, really brutally brilliant. I don't think any team has ever demonstrated to me how, uh, how to actually do this. And Mr. Gamma, thank you very much for the sub. I do absolutely appreciate it. We are actually coming up close to having a... Uh, uh, stinky giveaway on on one of my streams very soon. We're not too far away from that in the next month So uh, it'll be good to actually try and roll it into this competition, but great to see you all folks and uh, And good to see uh, my Chimera guys who of course I stream for a lot of the time uh, For their all well, the comp matches. I happen to pick up Chimera matches. Vortex wearing an artillery around to the head Woo. He would be pissed about that uh, so yeah, great to see folks coming along watching this and just seeing how other teams do it of course because uh, it's not always perfect on on, uh, on any given team you know you always stuff to learn look at the fire coming in from that left hand flank there we can hear that coming in uh, up on the hill here Adelaide and Whopper um, Whopper Junior Whopper should I say just trying to set up an AT gun they've got again I think it's just a bit exposed here the reason I say that is because look if I can see all of Bonhoff on mine then someone can see me with an anti-tank gun or a um, or a um, uh, tank so you know, I just, I, I would be looking to try and put it more down in this gap or something like that. Like somewhere, you probably can't actually put it physically here, but somewhere where you're screened with cover. And look, as he's even, as they're trying to even set up, they're getting shot at. So, yeah. Uh, here, where have we got? Down here, maybe? Oh, I like this spot. Oh, this is the nice spot. I like that one. What else have we got? Maybe, maybe here. Maybe over the back of this. Yeah, there's that anti-tank gun just blew up, pretty sure. They just got shot. So there you go. Here's a good spot. Better, better spot. Better spot. It's not perfect. Uh, yeah, all right. So where are we at now? We've got some more subs coming in. Just having a quick look. There we go. So they're throwing those supplies over there. I, 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 I think it's a bit of a waste because everyone's going to see it and they're going to go and get rid of it because there's nobody to actually do anything about it. Um, we need... What they need to release, I think, because they're not going to do boats and they're not going to do changes to this map, they need to release those bloody uh, water vehicles. So at least you've got a chance. Because once you're in this setup, it's against a, an equal team, it's, it's nigh on impossible to actually um, crack this bridge, isn't it? And, and ICF are just pushing, pushing, pushing real hard onto the uh, uh, Oceanic team. There's, there's some more artillery doing its job. I'm just going to take a quick sip of a drink here. And actually, before I do that, I'm going to go and turn off... I'm going to go and turn off the... Um, 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 what are they called? Ads. Because you guys will probably be wearing some ads here because I forgot to turn them off. So give me a second. The sound's gone out of the game. Of course, you'll hear that. So uh, where is it that I'm doing it? It's on Twitch. Uh, I will turn off the ads. I prefer the matches to just play out nicely without um, without revenue drain on you and uh, without having to put up that sort of stuff. So almost there. One second. Mm, there we go. Turned it all off. No ads for you, folks. There we go. Uh, we are fairly stagnant right now with the team on this side. Uh, ICF have managed to push their way across the bridge there. Checking out down here. There's Gypsy, the recon lead. Uh, artillery pumping in fire over here. Try and take out the anti-tank gun. Uh, so he's picked up his anti-tank gun and he's... he's whoa, I'll tell you what. Whoever shot that, unlucky. That old mate. Where did he go? George Soros. Of course it was bloody George Soros with his anti-tank rockets. George, that was on point, mate. Unlucky, mate. Unlucky. He packed up his gun. You saw it here firsthand. He's actually... George has redeployed. That's, uh, that's how he's worked. Uh, Kiwi up here trying to get some tactics going. And uh, so let's probably spear across here now and have a look at and talk about some of the teams 
and some of the stuff. So I want to just talk to you about uh, Ambrun from the ICF gang has actually sent me some information about what their guys are like. So we'll get in nice and tight on the bridge again. And we'll have a bit of a look what's going on. Anything going on over this way? They're just doing their setup. There's some more supplies going in. Oh, there's something happening up here. Ah, oh, of course, because that's where the... Uh, oh, they've got on the ground up here. Folks, trouble for the Oceanic team. We'll come back to talking about uh, ICF in a minute because they have cracked open <coughs> the defence of the Oceanic team and they've set up a garrison up here, I'm assuming. I can't see it right now. Oh, big, big trouble here for the uh, Oceanics because they've got one, uh, two squad leaders and two recon leads in location setting up, that's four spawn ports they'll have up here and Oceania and of course their response to that it is an airhead there it is right there took me a moment to find it nice shots there from the team but uh that airhead is just sitting there waiting waiting for a team to spawn in on it and come and take advantage of it and i'm just going to keep a close eye on this because i reckon we'll see about 10 people rock up in a second uh if icf are switched on artillery being called for on that point it's see how long comms takes though oh it's only three but three squad leaders that's the way you do it that is the way you do it. Lovely defense. Reno, one, two, pops a couple. Oh, he's been picked up by the third bloke. Reno, great job there on the defense, though. Uh, but they've done, this is what I've been talking about for ages, doing that little blob of squad leaders and getting them to work together. But they've all been shot by really good shooting by the uh, Oceanic team. Three para uh, suits there you can see on the left from three para. He, uh, he, he nailed that last dude, but they've still got their spawns in. The first two, though, picked up beautifully by them. Uh, oh, what great play going on here at the moment, folks. This is fascinating stuff. The two recons, of course, are around the back now. That's not what the uh, Oceanic team uh, want to have happen. So those two recon guys now are going to be really pissing off the back line here. They'll have got their uh, OPs down. I'm going to check that in a minute to see where all that stuff is, but we just want to watch what actually plays out here. There's the two, but the three the three squad lead play where you have three squad leaders and you run them as a little blob and you set up three OPs in different spots. You drop some supplies up from high and you get in the fucking garries and all that sort of stuff and then you mass spawn your team in. They just switch over to your squad and in they come. That's the shit you want to be doing. Look at this. They're just starting to push through now. Um, it takes a minute or two to get people swapping over, but absolutely on a map where you hold the advantage and you're dominating the defense, this is the way you want to attack is with the three squad leaders set up. Uh, I love it. And look at this. They're even sending more in now off of that garrison, which we can see just there. And um, uh, real trouble here for Oceania. Real trouble here for Oceania. It does, of course, slow down things on the bridge for them. But look at this. They can see what's going on here. Actually, let's do that now, shall we? Bridge has slowed right the hell down. So we'll get that two map thing up and we'll have a look. We've got three. I think that's three OPs in location. Four OPs in a garrison up there in uh, Charlie 3 on the ICF side. So they've just cracked the shit out of that absolutely cracked it open um and you see they've also marked out where the tank is there from the uh oceanic team and airhead now going in oh boy it's all happening folks never a dull moment with these teams is there let's get back across to the main main stage here and see what's going on they've pulled away some players of course this airhead is far too spotted they have to have gunfire coming in on it he's literally standing on where the airhead's gonna land Bonon's gonna come in this could be a tight one this could be a tight one. I reckon that 225 is going to get picked up as he as they set up here. Is it on time? It is on time. Is it on time? He's going to get it. He's been nailed. The airhead's good. They're going to shoot that guy on the beach. He's probably going to get picked up. Yes, he is. It could be a fire. Oh, that's how he's hit it now. Can we see the Oceanic uh, team coming inside? It's that's going in. Here he's trying to get everything out of it. He should seem to fucking fly over as well, folks. He's trying his best. See what Kiwi can do with this. Got about 10 seconds left, I reckon, before there's a spawn in there. They have to throw anything at it. This guy needs to be shot. If there's a chance, it's too much fun. Oh, God, it's, it's a fire in the head at the moment. There's a good aim coming forward. They picked up that guy. OP, that is a great play. And that's a good It's a good, good aim as well. Holy shit, bags. These guys have got to do whatever they can. Two squad leaders, just get your fucking OPs down, boys. Get your OPs down. Saint, he's managed to get his down. Slimy Snake's been nailed around the back. Did he get his OP up? 
two, two, Forrest, pick up that guy, big ball over off the head, oh, big trouble for ICF now, wow, this ramped up on L, didn't it, I've got no time to talk about the teams, folks, this is fucking good, that's the counter from the ICF's commander, Shell takes out half of them as well. There's an OP down. It's gone. They've got three OPs. Shit, I'm sweating. This is tight. Heist. <laughs> My goodness. They're still hanging on by the skin of their teeth here. They're hanging on the Oceanic team. Pouring at any scrap of fucking beach they can. Trying their best. The airhead's probably gone by now, but they've got at least a couple of squad leaders that got their OPs down. Only two. Hotel and for pass squad. There's the spawns. Two spawns now. This is a push coming in. But they've got tanks against them. I don't know what's going on in that other fucking area. I need to check that. I think what's happened is that... Kazbak has actually got someone on it at the moment. Just so you know. That's the next point up there. Oh, Jesus wept. Ladies and gentlemen, this is so, so tight right now. It could go any direction. We just don't know. The Oceanic team somehow have miraculously managed to claw onto the beach there with an airhead. There was an inch in it if there was a mile. And now we can see they're spawning in this tank round fucking... Whose tank round was that? Because it almost hit. I think it killed. It was, it was uh, a friendly kill. Slimy steak there. He's, oh boy, oh boy. That tank hiding behind those grain silos just gnawed the shit out of it. And it's just Slimy Snake, the medic, left now, folks. He's the only one left there. Everybody's gone. And, of course, the uh, OPs are all gone. That was a great attempt. A great attempt by the Oceanic team. A little lucky to get it off in the first place. But when they did, they tried their hardest. There wasn't enough fire support, folks. I'm going to say it straight up. That was not a well-defended airhead. There was not enough gunfire coming down to defend it. Or it was very piecemeal. Uh, so that's something to take away for all teams. An airhead on this particular map, in my opinion, needs at least two or three supporting fire elements. That would be a an any tank gun, a tank, and a machine gun on the hill, or you know some snipers and or whatever. At least three things defending the zone around it, and of course artillery as well is a nice mix. But you really want to be hammering the bridge on that one, I think, just so you can keep the pressure up here. Which Oceania are trying to do the pressure on the bridge again. Now we can see that they've got some people coming in. Um, Nice big batter booms there up in that top, 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 top corner. <laughs> All right. So what the hell happened? Whoa! I started sweating. <laughs> That's what happened. They're desperately trying to get some. Uh, I think I got a tank down here. That's what's been marked. Okay, there you go. So there he is, just down below us. That's a 75. He's just sitting there camping happily away. It's well marked though. Good, good intel there. Good, good intel. So, uh, yeah, the question was asked there in chat from 15 minutes ago, who's hosting? It is ICF tonight, They are, or today, they are hosting. Uh, let's get this two map up, though, folks, and we'll just have a quick quick uh, look at where we got to with all those other forces that were moving around. So you can see that the pressure's still there in the, in, in the ICF map, that top left-hand corner around the Charlie 3 area. We've got some Oceanic team running around up there trying to find them. They've still got all their garrisons, so they're pretty, pretty robust here. Um, the uh, Oceanic team, and uh, but uh, up in this area here, as I zoom in on it, they've still got that infantry. You can see the infantry there in the right-hand map, and uh, I'm just zooming in on the left to see. You can see the Oceanic team trying to cover that, but they're not doing it very well. There's still three OPs up there. Of course, two of those will probably be recon squads. There's a garrison there as well that's locked out at the moment, so Lima squad, Lamode, is actually pushing in on that. On the bridge side, you can see it's the same stuff on the bridge, the big grindy pound. Uh, they tried to push in on Bonhoeff and Ryan, if you're just joining us. Um, uh, Oceanic team almost got through there on the beach. They managed to get quite a few people in, but there was some absolutely brutal defensive play, particularly from the tank there uh, that's hovering around Fox 7 area behind some silos, and he managed to defend that. Now we can see there up at Kazbak that uh, the garrison's lit up, so the Oceanic team will be looking at that, of course, and seeing that ICF are starting to push through that area. That'll be probably that recon squad coming through. Probably should check that. Uh, looks like it's an anti-tanker and a sniper coming in there at, at Kazbak. So uh, 
They'll be trying to defend that, of course, the Oceania guys, because they can't afford to lose any more up this way. Back over here to the main screen, shall we? We'll probably get rid of that thing and do that. Uh, I'll, I'll get that coordination working shortly. And uh, so welcome if you're here. This is what, what it's all about right now. They rolled random roll for this uh, competition, which is a friendly today, this match, but it's set on the rules and um, the, the, the plan for what the NR... NS, the No Retreat, No no Surrender International is. And if I could just uh, quickly talk to you about the teams that are playing today. Um, uh, so, uh, and the question was asked about, you know, flipping the map and um, whether or not they, you know, could roll something else. Now, the way it works is, and they're doing it on the comp rule, so they went into the channel. One of the teams hit the exclamation map, and this map was what rolled, and that's what they get. And that's how it works. Uh, and I think the team that doesn't... I don't know actually how the map picking works, but let's talk about ICF first. Uh, so Ambrun has been kind enough to provide some information about ICF. And we're just watching the bridge here. Probably get ourselves under the bridge a bit better, shouldn't we? There we go. We're underneath now quite nicely there. We'll have a bit of a look. And I'm looking in from the panoramic as well. I think that looks okay. Um... So, Ambrun from ICF, their clan comes from China. They founded in 2021, March. They've only been, they're, less, uh, they're almost two years old now. Um, they dismissed in two, September of 22, but then they've rebuilt in November. So, you know, there's a few clans that are doing that over the years. Uh, these guys are no exception to that. Uh, it's not their first time that they've played with foreign teams. They've played against the Russian team, Team LS. Um, this is the first comp that they've been in. Um, and it's the first time that many of their guys have actually represented their clan. So this is all of them. Um, the um, the, the uh, ICF uh, guy, Ambrun, is a member of SESH United and used to play as a trigger member. So he's got quite a bit of experience, which is lovely to see. Um, uh, team IR, Team IR, ITK, they love those two Chinese teams and they've kept good friendship there. So watch out, Oceanic teams. I reckon they've been practicing together and, and IR's no slump, that's for sure. Um, We've got the uh, uh, Bakes as the commander on the night. He's a handsome boy studying <laughs> University of Saskatchewan. Love it. <laughs> a handsome boy studying in the University of Sas Saskatchewan. <laughs> oh, dear. Just talking about what's going on here quickly on the map. Um, ICF have pushed back uh, the uh, Oceanic team a little bit there. Just looking at the stuff going up over the left here still. And... Uh, we could still on for the bridge, isn't it? We probably should go up and have a look up at that way. We know what's happening on the bridge underneath and on top. We'll get the uh, the bridge panoramic going on so we can... We can just track that bridge view up there and we'll come up and have a look at what's happening in the top corner here because this is where more of the action is, so I don't want to miss any of this. And you can see, look at that, there's orange all over the place in there. All right, so while we're watching this, of course, we... Um, uh, Ambroon says that ICF is purely Hell Let Loose. Um, so others play other games, of course, but it's the clan itself is just purely about Hell Let Loose. They want to meet friends in the NRNS, and the time zone is pretty similar to the Oceanic region. It's actually not too bad. Uh, so Oceanic region and Asiatic region, we're sort of covering about five or six hours between Kiwi Land and uh, some of the Chinese regions. So that's not terrible because it's sort of same-day stuff. Um, you know, uh, the Chinese teams might play at four in the afternoon, which would be 10 o'clock... Uh, um, 10 o'clock at night sort of you know in Kiwi land and, and that's probably viable a lot better than some others I'm just noticing though folks there's a cap going on they're trying for the weighted cap up here this is uh, the weighted cap so they're throwing a lot of numbers up there we're just going to go over and have a look to see what actually uh, ICF do to respond to that because they've got a lot on the bridge right now and not many over here uh, they do have Puts, they have put some people in the circle. Of course, they probably even threw down a reinforce just to stop that cap weight thing going on. But that's what um, the Oceanic team needs to do. They need to have a setup along the beach here, putting fire support in over on here while they drop an airhead in. Honestly, that's the that's the ready for it combined arms that you actually need. Everyone needs a skull when you when you uh, hear combined arms, folks. All right, someone just dropped me some sushi. By the way, happy days. Um, so, anyway, what can I tell you about the rest of um, what Ambroon told me? Well, um, they want to play some fun games, uh, random map setting they love, because that way it kind of gives the, the sort of learning teams a bit better chance to be balanced off against some of these elite teams. Um, good opportunity for further training, and they may one, one day stand in amongst the top teams. So that's what they're kind of looking at. I'll tell you what, even though they got the map advantage here, they are playing pretty damn well anyway. Um, 
It's, you know, you're definitely seeing here this is a viable comp team doing good work. Uh, the bridge there is just nasty shit. Continuously going on up the top right there. We will watch that. Uh, looks like, it looks like the uh, Oceanic team has actually covered and closed down this attack. I tell you what, folks, if they have, hats off to them. That is some very impressive play if they've managed to shut this whole area down. Because there's, let's get on the ground and have a look what it's like. Look at this shit. How the hell do you find anything in here? I don't know. But somehow, the Oceanic guys have managed to, well, I'm not going to say somehow, through really good play, the Oceanic guys have managed to shut down this attack. Fucking well done. However, <laughs> there's still a lurker. Ladies and gents, he's lurking down here, but they know he's here. Someone just shot at him. I can't say his name. I don't I don't read Mandarin, unfortunately. Uh, but old mate, Wilbarrow with a lot of characters there. He's moving his way up. He's still a threat to the Oceanic team because they've got something on that side. Bridge is still the bridge. Still bastard bridge, isn't it? And we'll just come down and have a look from this side. What can I tell you about the Foy Boys and the Three Para Blend? So Three Para I met for the first time kind of about 12 months ago when I first started casting in the Big D Premier League. And uh, they're mostly Kiwi Land. I think they might have some Australian players in their clan. I'm not sure. Uh, but they're mostly Kiwis. So Airborne Kiwi is the clan leader, I believe. But I've made some great friends from the Three Para crew over the last 12 months. Uh, and there's probably a bunch of them hanging around here watching now that would love to be in there showing me how to throw grenades and, and climb up into fucking grain towers and stuff. So for all my regulars from 3 Power, thanks very much for uh, being here and uh, watching, even if you're not watching it live, of course. Um, but good bunch of blokes, really friendly crew, uh, very helpful community group, love working with other folks. And of course, they do have um, their 4 Para uh, clan, which is their training clan. I call it the Militant Arm. Um, of three power it's four power and i do have if i can just pop it open here i do have some information for you about who's actually playing on the day in this particular um this this particular match now before i go on to that of course i'm going to talk about the foy boys who i've known for pretty much my entire time of playing hell let loose uh i have a long line of friends in the foy boys and i was even having a game with them last night because uh, my in-game sound doesn't work, I jump onto various discords and say hello to folks when I try and game with them. And so last night was a bit of a Foy Boys catch-up, so I put, saw the uh, the hotties and the whippies and the um, cortexes and so on, and, and uh, um, Wit, of course, our, our squad leader for last night, always does a good job, old Wit does, and uh, it was great to work with him last night again after so long. So... Um, the Foy Boys, though, yeah, they're as old as the hills as far as I'm concerned. Uh, so two years of, of Foy Boys gaming time I've had. And um, a great bunch, of, great bunch of ladies and gentlemen. All right. So in the uh, Oceanic team here, of course, which is a blend of Foy Boys and uh, Three Power, the, the team that, that was kind enough to send me a bunch of information, of course, and they run a couple of tank crews. They run, of course, the two recon squads, and then anyone can be the sniper. But they do have their dedicated folks into some of these positions. Uh, the three para guys uh, said to me, wait a minute, I'll just find what M, uh, not M, Brune, bloody um, uh, Strike said to me. So Strike back's here at the moment. Uh, um, so they're trialing some ideas in this particular one. This is a, you know, it's a, um, a trial match. This is not a uh, actual comp match. But uh, big trouble here, by the way, on, on the Oceanic side of things, as this uh, bridge is about to do... Uh, oh, I've lost a... What have I lost here? I've lost a screen. What happened? Oh. <laughs> Let's get across there to that. There we go. Um, yeah, just just um, trialling a few things. They're trialling um, uh, some of the new players. So I'm just trying to read that, and I think that's why I'm losing my screen, by the way. So... Um, he was talking to me, Strikeback was talking to me about um, uh, the fact that they've got a lot of new players here. Regulars, which are all B BPL, APAI veterans and stuff like that. But the bulk of the team are new recruits over the new year, fresh and keen to get their teeth into a pretty stellar year of hell at loose. And oh, I agree with you, mate. Um, let's get back over that main screen. I agree with you. This is a stellar year of hell at loose. There's so much going on this year in comp. Uh, I think I'm involved in about seven or eight fucking comps, to be honest. And, uh, and I don't really play the game too much anymore because when I do get online, I'm usually just streaming it. 
which is fine. I love doing it, of course. But um, I think my skills have started to slack off a bit, so uh, uh, I definitely need to practice a bit more. Um, all right. The, the bridge is in real trouble here, ladies and gentlemen. We are watching a very determined push from the ICF. Get ourselves around here on the other camera and nice and nice and tight we'll watch in there and then i can pull the main camera away i'm having a bit of lag at the moment just just in case you're wondering what's going on i don't know where the lags appeared from but it's poo isn't it what else is happening around the back here did that guy get through that's the question look he's still getting he's getting pressed they've got something over here but the oceanic team um just pushing in quite nicely uh, to try and clear that out. This is the play though, right now. Look at this. There's a play going on down here uh, where um, the the ICF have managed to push through from that one recon guy when they got pushed all the way back to the beach. They've managed to get a garrison in here for sure. And now we've got a bit of a problem here for the Oceanic guys. Again, they've got to try and stop this uh, and shut this down quicker. Lamote's just been picked off there. Big trouble here now. This is a great play. Oh, another one down. Okay, gang there trying to set himself up. I'm not seeing any support fire coming in from the other side either, actually. So neither team's doing that very well. Um, <clears throat> neither team doing that defense, uh, support fire, that combined arm stuff very well at all. Uh, with the exception, of course, artillery. That's moving around quite nicely. But gosh, ladies and gents, if you want to, if you want to, uh, a few tips on that. I watch, I watch and stream so much comp stuff. Please send me a message, and I'm happy to talk to you through about how I would personally do it and some of the timings on it. And you don't even have to practice it. You just need to give clear orders at the time of what you actually want. Um, and it's just, there's not enough combined arms happening. So uh, it's, it's all of those points generally tend to get shut down. But having said that, of course, OCF have managed to put through enough people at the moment. Oceania are in real trouble here. They've been pushed back on two fronts. They've, they've almost lost the bridge, which of course we're watching there in that top right corner. And, um, <clears throat> And they are, uh, of course, losing that left flank. And now we've got up here, there's a recon guy up in uh, uh, Dan Radart 512. Since when has that changed its name? Oh, Kazbak's down here, dickhead. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> got psyched out myself. Nice. Uh, this is a tough point to fight. There's no one actually on it. There's a recon up there. They need to probably just clear him out. Crampy's probably trying to do that work. Here's where we see some tanks up the top right. The bridge is slowly getting shut down again. Must be due for another airhead. I haven't seen it yet. I haven't seen it, but we've got artillery getting called in. But let's let's uh, let's pop the two maps up again. We'll take a quick look at that, of course, and see where we're at with stuff. Uh, so you can see the garrison locked on Dane Radar 512. You can see nothing happening down here. You can see the spread of forces there uh, for Oceania is very clustered. Very close in the middle. You can see, look how much growth has happened here now. So we've got multiple spawn points spreading out. Uh, ICF are really starting to push out there on that left flank. Uh, absolutely starting to push out on the left flank. A uh, lot of trouble here. And they've got very good intel on those OPs. Gosh, that's good intel. They can't be cheating, by the way, because it's impossible to do that. Um, in... Uh, in so far as well for my stream anyway um but look at this look at that intel isn't that amazing they've worked out where stuff was they've taken down that garrison they're pushing this stuff they don't know about some other stuff up here but this is they must be spotting from down here onto that side of that hill and just seeing those hope is bloody good play whoever that is working that stuff out um <clears throat> all right so we're still looking at the bridge there it's still a big fight uh the Oceanic team trying to shut that down, but look how much over this side. As I said before on the main screen, look how much going on there. Just, oh, I don't think Oceania are going to be able to... don't think Oceania are going to actually be able to um, uh, close this one off or defend this one. Uh, I think they're just going to get slowly worked back. 44 minutes to go. So, ladies and gents, we're halfway through. We are halfway through. Uh, it's been interesting so far, hasn't it? How this has played out. Oceania, of course, were holding... Um, I've got to stop the bloody messaging coming up. Although I do like that messaging coming up so I know what's actually going on. Show command messages, that's where I need to go. Uh, so there we go. 
Uh, and Tom's too, in 15 minutes time, you'll answer this. Uh, do you want the second camera for the next match? I can't cast it with you or um, just do your camera work for you, but I can give you the second account if you want to run a second camera, mate. You need to PM me in Discord and I'll give you the details. Shit, I hope I remember the details. I'll give you the details of the second account and you can actually use that to log on if you've got another computer to do it with. I run it off a laptop, ladies and gents. Oceania have pushed back on the bridge quite nicely, just so you know. I forgot to tell Stu that. Stu, great egg, of course. Uh, as he'll tell you, you're a good egg. Well, I will tell you that he's a good egg, folks. And uh, he's one of our streamers that we work with all the time. Um, either I stream with him, he streams with me. We've not had a lot of time to do any work together recently. We're trying to set something up. And uh, is this an airhead? I'm looking for one. No, it's not. Um, and we are going to be casting the NRNS uh, matches where we can... We're trying to pick up all of them together. And uh, there's also another person, Repo. Um, I see he's a streamer for it. So, uh, yeah, look, we're happy to support that comp. And it is something I should tell you about, isn't it? Let's go across to this screen. And the reason why you hear the sound disappear every so often is because I'm just alt-tabbing uh, to the uh, about NRS to, to Discord, which is on another screen. I should probably just run it off my phone, shouldn't we, or something like that. Um, so this is a community-led, flexible and fun Hell Let Loose annual competition. This is the practice for it. Uh, it is designed, this match is a practice for it, if you, in case you just joined us. It is designed to let clans of all sizes to participate in scheduled matches in their own time that work in with their other competitions. The scoring system is points based and runs for the remainder of 2023. So they'll just, between now and November, be playing matches. Uh, there's a recon going up the hill there, he'll be doing good work. Uh, not too bad here on the shutdown from the Oceanic team, they've mostly cleaned up stuff, but these guys here working along the creek along the river are trying to cut off the supply line onto the bridge um all right the first season teams from oceania and china will take part but hopefully as this fun format gains traction they'll get teams from other countries as well so if you are from uh, one of the other competitions that i stream please take note of this one this is a flexible tournament this is designed so that it's not every weekend we get matches or whatever it's well we probably will with the number of teams that are in it but it's you just have to play a certain number of matches in the next 10 months that's it. The competing teams are three para. If you saw my video at the start, by the way, the competing teams are three para, Task Force Koala, Only Clans and Floyd Boys. They're a blend. Gary Busters, IR, ICF, SC, ITK, and Ballistics. I will learn more about some of those clans uh, over this year, and I will give you some information about it. I always reach out to the clan leaders, say hello, and uh, ask them about their stuff. Here is the airhead. Yes, it is. That's what I was expecting. An airhead now coming in. This will be, of course, an ICF airhead. They're going to try and press Kaz back now and, and really crack open the uh, defense of Oceania. Centurion's seen it, though. I think he'll pick this one up. There is a recon going coming in. Airborne Kiwi has, of course, seen that as well, but he's getting chased at the moment. Where's that going to land? Just down below me, I think. Yeah, there it is, right there. You can see it's always mucked by a white thing. Centurion here running in, running in nicely. He'll see that. He see that, where's he looking? Bombing run coming in. He's gonna run away from that bombing run because they don't have a lot of folks here on it. Clampy's looking as well. Centurion, oh, it's almost, he's almost worn it, but he's managed to get away with it. So there's a tank round coming in as well, trying to defend that. Centurion's gonna need to hit that quickly before he gets hit by a tank round. He's locked it out now. That'll be absolutely locked, and he's shut that down. That was great work from Centurion. Folks, that's how you do it when you know they're going to drop a bombing run on you. Just fuck off somewhere about 50 metres away. Let the bombing run take out the worms and the birds, and then do your thing. Back over to the bridge. as We've just been watching that, of course, in that main uh, top right corner there. We'll get over here onto the middle a bit more and see the action just keeps moving on me. There we go. And we don't have the sound in that top right corner, so we won't... Um, we won't sort of uh, see that play out at the moment. Um, here's the bomber run coming in now. I wonder, I wonder, just checking here. Oh, it is, it's an airhead. Yes, it is. There's an airhead coming in now. There's a flame throw on the airhead. Didn't even know you could do that. Bomber run coming in. It's just they've learned the lesson of the first time. And where's the fire support, though? There's no fire support on the airhead. Oh, it's a wasted airhead again. There's a strike. He picks up one. That's a nice strike. But where's the rest of the fire support? The airhead's there, but it's not going to be defended at all. They're just going to send their guy in. There's a, oh, it's missed. It's no good, folks. Have they run straight past it? Or have they just locked it out? I don't understand what's happening. Someone explain what's happening. Why are they running past the airhead? 
The commander's right there. He's looking at it. He's going, fuck me. Why did you run past the airhead, you idiots? Artillery's not ready for it. The air is going to be... Oh, no, no, no. It's just... Oh. Oh, oh. Team. Team. What on earth just happened? <laughs> What on earth just happened there? I don't understand it. <laughs> I don't understand what happened. Somebody explain what happened. All right. <laughs> I just... Uh, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. I hope chat's playing nice. I'm just watching it closely here. <laughs> it's 15 minutes from, from now. We'll, 15 minutes ago, you'll hear this message. I'm looking at your chat. <laughs> I'm looking at you. What happened on that airhead? I don't understand. <laughs> don't tell me what happened on that airhead. Here we go back over here. Now we're having a look at the uh, commander pushing in from the ICF team. Of course, we've got 37 minutes to go. All the work to be done here by Oceana. Um, nothing to be done by ICF. They've, they've tried their airhead. It didn't work at all. Uh, it was, it was, uh, wasn't even very well supported either. So, you know, both teams, they're not doing it very well. Uh, but we were talking about the, the ICF competition. Let's do the two map thing quickly and have a look here while I get that other screen up and we take a look at that. Um, and what about the uh, the NRNS, the, not the Oceanic thing, the NRNS. So let's talk about the map here quickly. As you can see there on that right screen, look at all the ICF running all over the place. Up the top there, around in a big circle, nine to 12 grid squares worth of randoms just running around. Uh, this is the problem, of course, for the uh, Oceanic commander. And... Um, uh, you know, he, he's got shit all over the place here on the enemy and they're just trying to shut down these garrisons and stuff, but they they can't get their own momentum anywhere while they're just playing in their back lines trying to defend. And it's a really, really, really hard place to defend, of course. Back to the main screen now, folks, while we, uh, while we watch this play out. It's a really, really hard place to defend, even though you would think, oh, it's nice to set stuff up on the hills and there and that. Once the, uh, here's a couple of trucks driving down. Um, once the uh, team get up here, like you can see, then they, they're just ripping around your back line, doing all sorts of naughty things uh, to your um, garries. They're locking out your stuff, your redeploys and things like that. They're setting up their own stuff. You can see there's infantry markers coming in from um, various squads saying, hey guys, there's fucking people all over our back lines, help us out. Uh, and of course, the moment they start pulling people back to deal with that, that's the end of the attack on the bridge. So we're just going to watch this play up here at the moment. How's that bridge looking? About as brutal as always. We're going to keep that top right corner um, uh, going there. And we'll just try and watch what happens in this play. So while we're watching this play out, of course, the NRNS, um, what can I tell you about? It's really about sportsmanship and good fun, carnage. It's not one of those super serious comps, which, of course, I love the super serious ones as well. Um, but you can play that level. And what happens, they, they want you to blood new players. They want you to bring in other clan mates. They want you to blend. They want you to be able to compete in this without having to use 40 people out of your own clan, which, of course, for a lot of clans, it's very, very hard to achieve. Very, very hard to achieve. You can probably get 20 or 30, but not, not the 49 that often happens. Um, so the idea here um, is, you know, don't be disheartened if you get a bad draw once the competition actually is running, of course. Um, uh, you know, it's the the end result is the best five scores throughout the year. Every team will probably have a bad draw at some point, like this one for uh, Oceania. This is a tough play for them because they've got a, you know, they're up against it from the start. Uh, again, though, this is a friendly. This is not the real thing. But if it was the real thing, they could probably, if they lose this, which it looks like they probably will, they can go. Well, you know what? We we don't want to count that one later. Uh, so any clan can challenge another clan. However, once versed, you can't play that clan again for three matches. Clan reps will meet once a match is planned and start the coin toss. Opposing clans, different time zones, the winner gets to host and the loser chooses the faction. The clans are in the same, same time zone, the winner gets to choose the faction and host. All right, um, the match has to be played at a time that works for both clans, of course, and that's what we were talking about before. Just a quick scroll here while we're looking at that. Um, yeah, and then a random number generator picks the, the map. And uh, you can see here what's happening is, just quickly, um, the uh, the ICF team are pushing in quite nicely um, up onto the hill. That's that's good work from them at the moment. They've really fought fought well through the lines here. Um, Clan's team can contain up to twenty five percent of other players to enable making a full team. 
If a clan turns up with less players than the agreed amount, no penalty is awarded, just the obvious disadvantage. A clan can have more than 25% of another clan in the team on mutual agreement. Match is a full map, full abilities. Winning conditions are standard. That's what I like to see. Don't overcomplicate it like you can't do this and you can't do that. Just play the game as it is. Why right now for a lot of these teams, they'll all know all the little tricks and tactics of climbing up into stuff and doing all sorts of cool stuff. Um, a clan can play as little or as many times over the year as their schedule will allow, but only your top five scores for the year count regardless of how many times you play. And scoring is, you know, like a 3 2 four, one that sort of stuff. So, yeah. Losing team gets two points. So oh, what's this? For example, a team that wins 3-2 will receive three points and one point for the win, equaling four points. And the losing team gets two points. And then if a team wins 5-0, then they don't get any extra five, they don't get any extra points. Okay, so there you go. <clears throat> this the system there, so if they have a bad loss, you know, go and fight some more matches through the year and just, just scrap that one that you lost. That's what you can do. So I don't like it. Oh the bridge is boring. Bridge is boring. It looks like who is this? Oh. OCN have been pushed back slightly. So this is where all the action is at the moment here. Adelaide coming in, trying to flank around. We'll just get in nice and tight on this action a little bit, I think. Adelaide trying to set up around the back here, as we can see. These guys are just trying to shut down the uh, the area. There's a tank in there now. He just took a rocket in the ass from somebody. That looks like a tiger, is it? It's interesting that brought a tiger on. Usually it's the Panthers. Of course, as it says up there in the top of the uh, middle of the screen, um, Three para four boys are the Axis team and the ICF team are the allies. That 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 tank has got the engineer of course on the back of it. Let's see, did he get the satchel on board? Now he's trying. He is trying. That tank is a two-person one. And there he goes, the satchel's on the side of the tank, ladies and gentlemen. They're either going to have to try and save that. I don't think it will. Uh, here's real NZ, I don't know the rest of his name. That's that tank's stuffed. That's a tiger tank that's about to go flying off into the middle of nowhere. Whiskey Man now trying to come in and help that. He's been shot as well. Uh, yeah, it's GG's for the tank. Oh, he's going to pick up by the explosion. He'll pick up Glock, Glock, Glossidium. There you go. There is a Chinese name I can pronounce. There goes the tank. Nice kill from the ICF guys. Uh, lots of flank going on here. A junior Whopper there just getting picked off on the side of the hill. Uh, real trouble here now for the Oceanic team as they're losing the next point as ICF start to push around all over the place. Back on the bridge. We'll get up. We'll get that camera up, actually, up onto that point. We've got the camera on the point now. We'll just watch that in that top right corner, so we're keeping an eye on that. The bridge is still being heavily fought over. Any airhead? We're looking for another airhead here. I listen out for it. Um, there's something dropping down on the beach. Whose is that? That looks like just a set of sups. Yes, it is. We've still got this push happening down here from ICF. George Soros is down there now. He'll deal with it. He'd want to. We talk him up enough. He better be on it. Uh, Bridge is back on. <laughs> I know, George. He's a good bloke. Uh, Bridge is still back on to exactly where it is. I mean, literally, we're, we're even Stevens here on the bridge. Lamode's trying something underneath the bridge there. Uh, and you can see the guy pushing in from the top. I'm just going to take a little sippy of the drink. Leopard crawling his way across the bridge a couple hundred metres. Mm. So Lamode there, working his way back to you, baby. He's going to try and get something happening here. What have they got to do, though? I mean, what do you do? You've just got to you've got to try and sneak in here with good play, that Tarkov type stuff, and then get your shit into one sock and pop your OP somewhere off to the side. I see it for just all over it, don't they? I mean, but you'd expect that. Once you control the bridge from that side, that's the advantage. I think that might be an airhead, ladies and gents, that's coming in. There it is. Yeah, I expected one sooner or later. Here's the sooner part. And um, Oceania in very much big trouble as they are going to lose the point here in a second. We're just going to get the camera around the other way. Nice and tight action here on the point. Keep that top right camera up. Just we're going to keep it on the point. There, there we have that airhead coming in now. It's got fire support from people in location and the Oceanic team are going to lose this point now. That airhead is a good one. It's viable. There's nobody around. There's nobody around. Look at where everybody is. There's nobody around where this airhead is. 
Someone below me, slimy snake, trying to get up. That smoke now, screening. Uh, screening that airhead now. So I think there should be a mass spawn wave from ICF. Should put at least 10 to 20 people in here now and just pop this wide open. This, ironically, is probably going to give... Now they've sent four, okay, but two squad leaders, okay. So they'll probably do the squad leader spawn thing that I was talking about before. Um, this might give... Uh, the Oceanic team a chance though. If they allow this to be capped, if they have enough Garys and stuff set up to be able to do the one-two punch, you know what I mean? Like, let the bridge die off and let let the um, ICF guys control that and own that, right? Let them capture this point here, but have yourself set up, because you, you're going to lose it anyway. Let them... Oh, nice artillery. Artillery's on point. That's a good shot. Um, let them capture this this point, and while they're doing that, set up your, your your attack garrisons and stuff to be able to capture this back, and then get ready with your airhead and everything else. Get your get your team, and then come in from like five different directions, cap the point with everything you've got, and then mass spawn wave onto an airhead with some fire support from here, like an airhead on that same spot, sure, but with fire support from up here, a couple of tanks, all sorts of shit. So. That is what I would try. I'm not saying it's going to work. I am saying if I was in this position, I already have these types of plans in my head, and that's what I would try. Uh, it doesn't take pre-training. It just takes communication. You tell someone something like, all right, so let's talk through it. Let's look at that. All right, Alpha Squad, I want you to have an OP set up in this area here by the 20-minute mark. Uh, Bravo and Charlie Squad, I need you to dominate the top of that hill and set up OPs up there and a garrison place. Uh, Delta Echo Foxtrot, I need you to push down through the bridge area, be defending that bridge area down at the base of it, and also push along the bottom here, and Foxtrot Squad as well, come along there as well. Hotel Squad, I need you and India Squad pushing up from the top here. All tanks, you to roll over the top of the hill on the right-hand side and sweep down along there. I want one tank to stay up here, so that'll be... November squad, stay there with your tank. Uh, other tank squads, you can try push into the point. If you die, don't worry about it, push in anyway. Um, artillery, you'll be the pounding the point. And on go, at the 20 minute mark, everyone is to rush into this point here. Uh, I need Oscar Papa and Quebec squads, leaders. You are to be ready, infantry just freelancing at the time. I'm gonna drop an airhead on the other side of the river and then you three are gonna spawn in on there. I want Alpha Bravo and Charlie squads to send all of their troops into uh, Oscar Papa and Quebec squads. Once that airhead's viable and those squad leaders are on the ground, you are to immediately swap over to those squads and spawn in on either the airhead or the OPs. That is nothing needed to be practiced. You can literally just do that in mid game by having a set time that you want to achieve it by. Uh, and then it actually gets yes, you, like your T hour, that's your execute hour. So you just give them those orders, that's what they need to work towards, getting their OP set up wherever you wanted them or whatever. You just need them to work towards that. And that gives them time to do their thing on the field without you having to micromanage them or have preset strategies or whatever like that that your team's practiced. You don't need that shit. Well, it's useful, don't get me wrong, and it's better to practice, but when you don't have the ability to practice to that level, um, you can actually... Uh, you can actually just have something set up like that where you just know what order. I mean, a commander could just have that on a piece of paper, and that's that's his battle plan for that particular map if if the bad thing happens like what's happened here. Great work, though, from Oceania here. Let me tell you, ladies and gents, I thought they'd lost this completely, and it was 50% down. And they have done an amazing job to bring this back while I was giving my little uh, soapbox set of orders there of what we would do. Uh, so really, really good work there. Let's take a little bit of a look-see here. We've, we've got that... that that point covered down now. Lamode's still fucking crawling across the bridge, folks. Just gonna bring this up a bit. That was a good shutdown from the Oceanic team. But I just want to keep the camera up there on the top now. You can see where I've put it. Um, where, where, where there's still that control area that needs to happen up the top, so I just want to watch that. There's an airhead coming in. Wondered when Kiwi was going to put it up and on. Has he got defensive fire on this? Where is it coming down? Where are you, bastard? Here we are. Right here. There you go. Airhead coming down. Artillery too late on those markers. Too late. Remember, it's like 30 seconds for for um, 
for flight time. So what's what's going on? The nice kill, big kill there from a sniper, I reckon. Great shot. Here's the bombing run coming in. It's not actually going to pick anyone up there, this time, uh, but <laughs> there is an airhead finally coming in. But that's that bomber and I, ironically, has actually told them that an airhead there if they weren't watching for it already. And now nobody can see jack shit with the bombing run going across there. I don't know if Mao is actually watching that. The artillery's still not landing. Way late on the artillery. Absolutely way late on the artillery. And here's Mr. Mao. He's looking, he's looking, he's looking. He can't find it. Oh, big artillery. There's the artillery. Finally arrives. Only about an hour fucking late. But that's a big spawn, way, ladies and gentlemen. Look at this. Look at that. Oh, that's a huge grenade into the middle of it. Oh, oh. Four people left, three of them are squad leaders. Not too bad at all. There's a recon flare coming up. This is the response here from Oceania. After an hour and eight minutes of gameplay, uh, we might have something that's a bit more viable, folks. They've got to get off to the right. Yeah, look at that. Look at that shooting from IC... Uh, 225. 225. There's another airhead spawn. That's only three. A tank on the spot now. He's just chasing it. He'll have a hard on for that tank. He'll be trying to pick it up. That's a 76. He's not, he's not going to be able to go anywhere. And now he's dead. So he's definitely not going anywhere now. That tank's just gone. Boom. Thanks for coming. Get out of there. Oh, boy. But it's definitely definitely the synchronization of, of artillery and stuff not working at all there for the, uh, the combined group. I mean, but remember here, folks, this isn't actually the comp team for the Oceanic guys. This is just two clans blended together to have a friendly. Um... That both of them are playing in the comp, of course, but they're, they're not... Um, uh, I would expect that three para might supplement some with board, with the Foy Boys, but OC, uh, OC and the Foy Boys will actually be the official comp uh, group from that setup. And there, the airhead's gone now. Um, uh, now, Lamode, I just saw the message come up there. Lamode has managed to get an OP across the river into the building. Oh, he's been shot for his trouble. Oh, unlucky. Lamode doing work for the last 20 minutes. 20 minutes he's been crawling along just trying to get something happening he's got his op up it's a couple of dudes on the bridge there this isn't terrible this isn't terrible but uh, i think they'll find that out the, where the fuck is his op oh that's terrible from me there where did he get the op up where is it it's on the bridge it's on the bridge Ooh, there it is there it is just underneath nice work from the mode folks could be an mvp coming up there good egg Lamode, isn't he Stu? Uh, but look, it's just... Wow, what 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 interesting play. I've got that fucking map there. Either. It's still pretty boring up on top of the hill. There's lots going on. Um, there's lots going on in the bridge still and everything like that. But uh, it just sort of thins out a little bit in that top camera. And I'm not going to spend too much time on it. We should be watching the main camera anyway. But boy, oh boy, what an interesting set of airheads we've seen today. Yeah, Airborne Kiwi trying to throw everything at it. They just haven't had the coordination with their gunfire and, and defensive fire on those airheads and or smoke or anything like that. It's just, it's not gelled well enough for them to get, you know. Let's think about this. All the airheads we've watched, with the exception of one, were reasonably good airheads that had a good intent and an intent to actually have combined up. But unfortunately... The timings were off. And yet they still went pretty well. So imagine if the timing was on and they had, like, coordinated gunfire coming in, artillery smoke coming in, sniper fire coming in, uh, you know, machine guns from the bridge shooting across there as well. I mean, honestly, folks, you know, when I talk about having stuff set up on the hill to defend it, there, there's, there's opportunity to put a machine gunner here, facing out that way, use this, like, barricade as some defence... Or, or this this uh, other one up here, right? Set up on the side, back here, and just be machine gunning across there or sniping across there, defending your airhead as it's going in. I just haven't seen that. I haven't seen that from either team, and and that's the stuff you've got to be thinking about. And even as squad leaders and players, you should be thinking about that. The commander should be saying, I'm putting an airhead in in a few minutes' time. And players should start thinking about what that means for if they're going to be a defensive player on the bridge or an attacking player or whatever. I, I just, I really want to be able to command a match on this map and just try some of my stuff out. I really, really do. I think, 
With, 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 sorry, not a pub match because squad leaders are 50 50 whether they listen to you or not, no matter what type of commander you are. Um, I mean, with actually organized squad leaders, stuff like that, actually with a comp team, I would love to try some of my strats on, on this map because I think they would work. I really genuinely do. Uh, and, and that's just from my experience of understanding how timings work in the game knowing how long it takes to spawn in off a Gary or an OP, uh, you know, when you when you need people to change position and stuff like that. Um, I, that. I talk about this stuff frequently. There's a reason I'm talking about it because I think if you want to take your game to the next level as a leader, you should be actually doing some of that stuff. Bit of trouble here, though, for Oceania. They're just getting pushed on Kazbek again. Uh, rounds going down range there from the tanks. You can see up on the top of the hill, it's, it's been a nasty little fight this whole time. We'll get that camera up there. And, uh, yeah, they're just starting to cap that out now for uh, 17 minutes to go. Uh, Adelaide there by himself trying to defend that point uh, as he's been, all his mates have been killed. He's trying to clear that top of that hill. There is a tank up there, I think. Yes, there is. There's a panther there, and it's got another satchel edge. Oh, good run over there. Who's in the tank at the moment? Esky and Whiskey, uh, old mates there from Foy Boys. Uh, good to see them doing their thing. Those guys are trying their darndest to uh, um, do whatever they can. Here's Day, Day Boy, of course, he's a support guy, so he's not going to be able to do anything to that tank. But those guys managed to stop that uh, uh, assault guy from uh, putting a satchel on them. So well done, although the Glockidium is now chasing them again. He won't give up until he's got his satchel uh, on, on his man. Uh, but the points contested, it's having a little bit of a blink now. It's going backwards and forwards between the two teams. It's got that coloured thing happening. Gypsy there popping the flare up to show everyone what the problem is. That's the problem, folks. They've got folks up there. Actually, you know what? We haven't seen the two maps for a while. We'll probably be our last time now having a look at it. We'll get that information up for you now. Looking here right now, folks, and you can see... Well, look at the right map. Look at all those players from the ICF team. All right, you would think that that would be the Oceanic guys, but it's not. That's the ICF guys all the way up the Fox and Golf columns there. Just absolutely pressuring the shit out of uh, Kazbak now. And then on the left-hand map, you can see the Oceanic team trying to counter that. They've got two pretty well-placed Garys, to be honest. They are good garrisons uh, in that front area there that allow them to push back up the hill towards Kazbak and stop things from going bad. There's a uh, supply drop going in around the back as well from, uh, uh, from Airborne Kiwi, so he's trying to get a third garrison. And... Uh, yeah, they're trying to do the right thing. Oh, gosh, I better not do that. I forgot, um, of course, uh, that I am a, a squad leader at the moment, so I better be careful I don't make mistakes and ping stuff for them or whatever. Confuse the shit out of them. Here comes that playing error across now. But, yeah, nice kills there from Crampy or Kips. Remembering, of course, that there's a lot of new players here in the comp scene. And, folks, if you're watching uh, your first comp match uh, and you're on these teams, congratulations for taking the plunge into comp. It is a genuinely interesting and rewarding um, area to play in. And the reason I say that is because everybody who plays in comp or watches comp learns and grows as a player. Uh, I have absolutely, as a, as a caster, learnt and grown, a bit, you know, so many things that different people are showing me in, in how they do business here. Uh, we don't get in tight a lot of the time. Here comes that panther again. Yep, that's the boys again. Hi, oh, they picked up Yag Panther. Uh, Yagpanzer, are they? Yagpanzer, uh, good to see you as well, mate, on the game. Uh, usually he's one of my uh, point of view providers. Just just does that, uh, helping us out. So um, I didn't need that today, but uh, I do thank him for all the times he's supported me in the past. Oceania, 15 minutes to go. Can they do anything with this? They are closing down the point yet again. So their defence is up to speed, <clears throat> as I would expect from these teams. Uh They've still got oh, Centurion, great player. He's around there trying to do what he can. Tank fire or anti-tank fire. Happy birthday to George. George Soros. Getting more mileage up. Congratulations, George, on the mileage. How many miles? This year for me, it's the big five ton, ladies and gentlemen. Hard to believe I know because I'm such a gorgeous looking young man, but the big five ton for me this year. Taking a free drink. Go. Oh, Centurion. Called him out, he got shot down. 14 minutes to go. I, uh, I feel like we are at the point where it's going to probably just stale out here with just good play. Pops there getting nailed by um, overall, mate. There is good kill. Um, so ICF really dominating the other side of the creek now, by the side of the river now. Um, it's, the, it's the Rhine, isn't it? 
Ludendorff bridges on the on the Rhine. Where's Where's Death Altberg when you need him to actually pronounce this stuff correctly? Fine. Uh, all right. Good Soros and, and gang race around the back there, Airborne Kiwi. Sort of stationary at the moment. So he'll be trying to do what he can to uh, get something happening. I reckon we're probably not far off an airhead. We need to watch watch that. We need to watch that for that. And I've turned off the notifications on that now. So uh, that could be problematic. Looking around the back here. Let's see what the uh, actually guys from ICF had on their artillery. I didn't do that earlier. I apologize for that. Normally, I actually come down here and have a look and tell you what's going on. So they got two. Folks probably saw them on the map anyway. So they got two squad leaders on artillery for the comms reasons, of course, to be able to talk to the um, the commander pretty well. Um, you don't see many battles actually fought out this side of the map because nobody generally ever gets there. Usually get rolled straight through. A lot of fights on this side, though. It's such a biased map, this one, isn't it? But both teams playing pretty well. Uh, ICF definitely showing that they are well and truly worth worthy of being in the comp scene. Um even with an advantage on this map, they are still fighting against some pretty good uh, players here on, on the uh, Three Power and Four Boys team, and they are holding their own against them in just fight to fight. So that's well done there. Uh, tough play, though, here from the Oceanic team, having to try and defend this entire area um, when they've lost the bridge like that. Uh, and, yeah, they tried at the start. They got all the way up to one end of the bridge. But uh, there was much they could do. What do we got down here? That that's, that's a Panzer IV. So he's doing a bit of gunfire in over the other side of the bridge. They're trying to help out. We've got Lamode and Squad here trying to push through to the bridge again. Just what a shit job it is. <laughs> you know, back up onto the hill here. There's gunfire. There's explosions. Funty somehow has made his way onto the side of the hill. Uh, and he's working his way around. Probably trying to get an anti-tank kill of some sort. Um, good luck there, mate. I've never had any luck on that hill. But uh, there's obviously ways of getting through there. Big gunfire coming in here. We've got the folks up the top there trying to push through. Trying to push through and clear out these guys. This best shroud now flanking around the top of Enslavia and Cortex. Um, nice kill from Enslavia. Red pushing on the ridge line as well. So they're trying to get down here and take out what I would assume is some sort of OP or garrison on the side of the hill. I can't see it, but it wouldn't be too far away from where we are right now, folks. Just looking to see if I can see it. It'll be somewhere, somewhere there. Hmm. Yeah, it's quite literally fucking... <laughs> it's it's just here somewhere on the map. <laughs> Look at the other map there. It's just here somewhere. How can I not see it? So these guys are trying to cut around the back of that and, and kill them. Uh, because this is the feeder line, isn't it? That's where they just keep coming in. And it's a bit of smoke coming up now. So Adelaide and Crampy will be trying to defend against that. Top right corner is what we're watching there as well, folks. The point's pretty well defended. Ten minutes to go. What's happening at the bridge? The bridge is still in all sorts of trouble. Suits there sniping from the riverside. Lots of uh, ICF around this flank and up on the hill, as we saw before. Nobody out this way now. Oh, that's a recon going over. We're due for some more airhead action soon. This will be the last play from uh, the Oceanic guys as well. If they throw an airhead down in the next... Um, minute they might get another one but uh unlikely unlikely all right <clears throat> what haven't i talked about here it's been an interesting match hasn't it a couple of exciting points airhead 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 let's look where are you that's it that's the airhead knew there was one coming that is a direct airhead it'll come with a bombing run for shits and giggles where is it can we see it it's not where oh it's over here there you go airhead down below me in this trench ray watching it come down is going to also be expecting a bombing run at some stage he needs someone else to come and help him listening for the bombing run let's watch it let's watch it play out still watching the top of the hill there the oceanic team have managed to shut down oh big artillery that's it there's the airhead Ray watches it come in. Oh no, this is bad. This is big bad boom. Pop's coming around the back. She may she may be able to save this. Killer Nan is coming in as well. It's gonna be up to Pops, ladies and gents, or Killer Nan. That airhead's viable in about 10 seconds. Here goes Pop, she's locked it out. That's a good thing. Quick, quick grab. If the artillery's on it, they weren't. Pops has got it. Nice work. Well played there from the Oceanic guys, shutting down that airhead. What a good airhead, though, in the timings of it. 
They really caught Oceania off guard and well played there for them to get scramble back their defence. Um, some of these airheads are pretty close, folks, to actually cracking the attack or crack cracking the defence. Oh, both sides. Oh, well, mate, just got blown up all the way through the bottom of the map. Nice work. Eight minutes to go. Still all the work to do here for the Oceanic team. They are not going to be able to crack this ICF defence unless they get an airhead down. Let's see if they can do it. Let's see if they can put bombing runs and artillery in early. Well, let's look at resources quickly. We'll turn the header bar off and we can take a look at that. They are good for resources. So they should have enough for things. So they'd want to pump an airhead in somewhere over here. Here it comes, I reckon. No. No, what is that? That is just a set of subs, I reckon. Yes, it is. So, um... The, uh, you know, pop an airhead in down here or something, sure. But then have it so they got line of sight from up there. A couple of guns firing in, or maybe over this way. They see they got a tank here. Now they know, they know it's going to come. All right. Get this, get this airhead down in here, though, where there's a bit of cover, like maybe in there. And then they can actually have gunfire, artillery landing, let's say here. Just have the artillery smash in this area here. Machine gunner covering this side here. Anti-tank gun covering this spot here and the tank on overwatch sort of spreading fire around across the whole area And then as your team spawns in you get some running that way into the bushes to set up their APs Some can fold back onto the riverside and set up their APs and some can push forward into the buildings The combined arms part of that is the key without that you got nothing. Here's the airhead. There it is Knew it Right there. Oh, he's actually gone a bit further forward than I'd expect. Okay. We are watching, folks. We are watching, watching, watching. We are going to watch the bridge as well and see what happens there. Nothing, I don't reckon. Well, let's watch it from a different perspective. They've seen the airhead coming in. They're bouncing around like little chickens. The airhead is in a good spot. The bombing run's coming in. It's not ready. It should be here soon. Here's his bombing run. It's a good bombing run. He's satcheling. He satcheled the ground for the air to come in. Will the bombing run blow up the satchel? I do not know. Oh, the, wow, this will be tight. This will be tight. Yeah, yeah, the satchel got the air head. Oh, that was a good play from 225. And But there's no other firepower coming in. They still didn't do it, folks. They still did not do the combined up. So that's GG's, ladies and gentlemen. Suitsy has made his way across the... Br Wait a minute. I'm not going to call GG. How the f... has he got himself across the bridge? Suitsy! Suitsy! This could be a game-changing play from Suitsy. He's got a spawn wave coming in underneath him. Oh, my goodness me. What is he doing? What He's got his OP up. They're below him under the bridge. They can hear him on the bridge. Old mate there is looking up. Suits his in position. He's died. So he's redeploying. These guys know there's an OP there. Or something. I reckon he can hear it. Oh, there's a spore wave. Oh, ladies and gentlemen. Here we have a game. Oh, he's lost his OP. He's lost his OP. Oh, great grenade kill from... From, uh, oh, no. Wow. So, Suitsy, why did he redeploy? I wonder. Because he was the only option they had for redoing the OP if he survived. And he hasn't. Virus is killing a couple around the back there. Killing in. Oh, Red's just been picked up. Oh, they've lost an opportunity there. I don't know why he redeployed because then the OP was grenaded. Just, I don't know whether that was good play by the OCF guys or they, they they got a sniff of something going on or what. But they managed to run under the bridge. They've heard the... Oh, that's it. They've, they've run under the bridge. They've heard the OP or the footsteps. They've thrown grenades up on top of the bridge. They've killed the OP. Great grenade, by the way. Uh, and that that's that. Oh, Adelaide wearing a, wearing a rocket as well. Uh, there's the panther there on, on all sorts of fire. Um, so that's GG's, but... Suitsy there, how he got across that bridge, I have no idea. I really don't. So that'll be GG, folks. Again, of course, as we said before, this is only a friendly. This 
is this is only a friendly, but it's been a really cool match to watch. And and I mean, folks should be learning stuff about Remigan uh, today. If you didn't know some of the strategy or tactics or thoughts or things to worry about, or if you haven't commanded before and and you kind of uh, you know wondering how we think about things or I think about things anyway, that's what I that's what I do is what we talked about here. Um, so if that helps anybody in their strategies and tactics for Remigan, well done. So it will be a 3-2 victory to uh, ICF in the first friendly that I've streamed for these guys. Uh, for three para and four boys, the first time I've seen them play in the same group. Uh, certainly I've watched them play against each other before. Uh, and three para have come a long way in since the first competitions I saw them in. But of course, there's a lot of new players in there today. So... Um, uh, great to see so many new players giving this comp scene to go. Folks, this is a big year for Hell Let Loose. I will not uh, tell you a lie. It is a very, very big year for comp. We do have some challenges in the comp scene, though, with clans struggling to get full teams in, in some of the clans. Uh, here's an airhead, I reckon, from uh, the ICF guys. This would have to be... Is there an airhead available to them? No, they would not have that ready again, would they? It's just up. So consolidated play here from Kiwi. They're going to just play out the 3-2. Uh, we're almost at the no-go zone or the line of no departure. So in 30 seconds' time, it will be a definite GG 3-2 win to ICF. Um, I don't expect anything else is going to happen there except just to fight this out. Kiwi's probably calling the team back now just to defend the point. Um, there's not much point in being forward anymore. There's, there's no real viable options left down here at all. Uh, and so just bring your team back in defence and take a 3-2. And this is what you would do, actually, on the day, wouldn't you? Realizing that you're not going to actually beat the other team here, you would take the 3 2, so you still get your two points. So the, the ICF team in the comp would actually get four points, and Kiwi's team here, the uh, three power foy boy combination, would get two points. Points are still points on the board, but of course they would likely scrap this game if they didn't um, they didn't hit, uh, you know, if they don't, don't win this one, they'd probably scrap this one to try and, and win a, a better, another game. Of, I've got five, got to get the best five from what I said before. So there it is, folks. Uh, that is GG's from the the team. Uh, what I will do is I will get that top right screen in a position where we will do the... Uh, just have a look at the players there. If you can read that, uh, if you're on a mobile phone, um, can't help you out, I'm sorry. But uh, yeah, just looking at what the players are there. As we watch the rest of the play, let's get down here and have a look at the weeds fight that's going on. Uh, and what's feel like on the ground. Sainty almost an MVP moment. But I've got to say, Lamode worked pretty hard there as well. So I'm going to try and work out which one of those two guys I'm going to give it to. Uh, big gunfire coming in. George Soros, always a pleasure to see you on the field, sir. Uh, and I uh, just called him out, so he died. Extremist curse got him. Big defensive blow. This, this stuff here, you know, no strafe there, but it's just a little bit short. Um, I'd, I'd want a couple of people here on the um, on the riverside. There's a bomber coming in on him. Hang on, I'll have a look. Head. Oh, this is a good bombing run. Oh, they're going for the late cap. That's what it is, of course, because all of these... <laughs> bombing run from hell, that one. Um, yeah, here's the airhead. No, just uh, just a supplies. Uh, yeah, so... <laughs> good fly from both teams. Really good to watch, folks, and I'm hope I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you enjoyed my streaming as well. Uh, I am a little bit unique in the way I do things. I'm going to turn off that guest point of view and we'll get ourselves across to the main screen in a second where we can have a look at our favourite teams as they play and I will whip my head around to the other screen, my laptop over here and... Um, oh, rocket at that air! That, oh, you missed it! Nice shot! Nice shot, I love stuff like that. I'll see if I can do the MVP. Who is the MVP on the other team? Let's make sure we can't pick up whoever gets the first one. Lemo, there you are, so you can have that. Oh, look, I'll give it to... Oh. Charlie Squad got it today. I don't know who that is, but well done to him. Uh, I don't know the names well. So, folks, that's our players from both teams there. Let's have a quick look at them all as we go. We can turn off that other stream as well. We don't need that anymore. Really enjoyable. I'll turn up the header bar as well. There we go. And we'll do this quick. We'll do the quick look see at the uh, front screen here. As I say, I like to show you all the teams and all the players and how they played and what squads they are in. See, they've got a lot of depth over here in individual squad leaders. Telling you right now, ladies and gentlemen, you've got to have that in your teams. 
you got to have that in your teams because it gives you agility, which is the thing that wins or loses matches. Uh, agility. So there's your teams. Pause the stream later on. Have a look at who did what and what their numbers were, if you like. Um, but really, really pleased to see that, you know, this started so well. Uh, and, um, and, you know, this is the friendly match. And then we will get into the actual comp start of it. Well, I don't know. Actually, when it started now, isn't it? Not really sure. Not really sure. Oh, I lost the connection to host. Oh, it all disconnected. Please don't tell me that I've lost my uh, stream as well. Hopefully not. Let's get ourselves across to the main point of view. The game actually just quit. I think they shut down the server. Oh, that'll be what it is. Woo! Get a bit of the old back blues going on in there. All right, so here, yeah, as I said here before, I started the game pretty quick today, so I am your host, Noppers, for this one. We will go into a raid in a sec. Um, but uh, <laughs> I've seen some memories in the channel as well already. God, I love it. I love it. We'll do a raid now, folks. Thank you for joining me. I'm your host, Noppers. All the revenue that comes into this stream goes towards uh, giveaways. That's all I do with that revenue. So if you support me in that way, you will find out about the um, you will find out about that sort of stuff later. In 15 minutes' time, if there's someone streaming already, we will bounce across to them. If not, we won't. Thanks very much for watching, ladies. I hope you have a great uh, ladies and gents. I hope you have a great weekend, uh, and I look forward to catching you up with you, up with you soon. Uh, bye for now.